Hello, New Hope. I hope this video finds you all in good health and enjoying these early days of spring. I always think this time of the year about the beautiful flowers as they begin to pop up out of the ground. I think of the early signs of spring uh, being the daffodils and tulips and so forth that, that uh, begin to pop up, sometimes even through the snow, and then they become beautiful flowers early in the spring. I think that this is a time that we all understand. Uh, we call it spring cleaning, where people air their houses out and wash the windows, and they do basic repairs to things that perhaps have been damaged through a harsh winter. And uh, so, at any rate, it's a marvelous time of the year. It's my favorite time of the year. I love the spring. Recently, we came through two very major holidays, one for our Jewish friends that they call Passover, and then followed the next weekend by the holiday we call Easter. And we have very different aims so far as the two religions go, uh, but in many ways, Judaism is the root of Christianity's fruit, because your Bible declares that Christ is our Passover. But in keeping with the idea of spring cleaning, I think about the Jewish traditions that surround their holiday Passover. And I think about Jesus, Yeshua, our Jewish Savior, who the very last night of his life on the earth, before he was given to be sacrificed for us, he ate a Passover meal with his 12 Jewish disciples. And the Bible is rich in, in discussion about that last supper for Jesus. In fact, he said it this way. He said, with desire, have I desired to eat this Passover with you? The double reference to the word desire there indicating just the depth of what God was, or what Jesus was trying to share with us about how much he knew and understood the Father's plan and how he had anticipated the ultimate relationship that he has with you and I as his children today. So our Jewish friends, as part of their Passover rituals and the things leading up to Passover, uh, they go through a spring cleaning. And one of the parts of the spring cleaning, if they're an Orthodox family and they've just moved into a home, it's their goal to get all leaven removed from the house. So in the day when people had wallpaper on their walls, it would not be unusual for a, a, a Jewish family recently moved into a home occupied by others, uh, and it would not be unusual for them to remove the wallpaper to get the paste off of the walls because, uh, of course, wallpaper paste used to be a kind of a combination of flour and water and not a lot more. But just in the thought that there might be some yeast in it, some leavening in, the, in it, they would remove the wallpaper and redo the walls. So a Jewish family would clean the house top to bottom, perhaps wash the windows and do some basic repairs, getting ready for Passover, the second holiest of all of the Jewish feasts or festivals or or uh, gatherings together. And what they would do is they would go through the house, the mother predominantly would clean while the father was at work, and the mother, if uh, they were in good relationship, would leave a few crumbs of bread, perhaps on a kitchen counter somewhere, and the father, the night, the night it was due, uh, they would turn the lights all off and light candles and go through the house looking for unleavened uh, bits and pieces of unleavened bread that might be laying around. They would find it, he would find it, and he would sweep with a feather. He would sweep the leavening into a wooden spoon and then wrap the wooden spoon containing the leaven up in a linen cloth and he would take it to the synagogue where it would be burned with the similar items from other Jewish homes. 
and with a ceremony there. So think about all of these parts. First of all, leaven is a type of sin. And the idea is to remove all the sin from your home. The, um, so the crumbs are a type of sin. And they were swept with a feather into a wooden spoon. Now, there are a, a few types in the Bible about the Holy Spirit, but the, really the only tangible physical thing that he ever uh, resembled was he came down in the form of a dove and rested on Jesus. You'll remember at Jesus' baptism that happened. So think about a feather, the Holy Spirit, sweeping the sin from our homes and from our lives, being caught up ultimately by a wooden cross, symbolized by the wooden spoon, rolled up in a linen cloth, uh, just like Jesus' body was rolled up in linens and placed in a tomb thereby the father would have cleansed his house from sin and he would make a declaration that he, so far as he knew and so far as all the knowledge that he had, he had purged his household from leaven. And that leaven was taken uh, to the synagogue and a big bonfire, there it was burned, symbolizing Christ going to hell for us and then being raised in newness of life. Paul talked about all this in his letter to the Corinthians, verse 5, and I, I would like to just read a little bit, and then we'll conclude. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? So in other words, just a little bit of sin makes us a sinner. Just a little white lie makes us a, you know the rest of the story, if we take something that is not ours, we are a thief. So we have broken God's laws. Just a little bit of sin makes us a great big sinner. Just like a little bit of yeast will leaven the whole batch of dough. So Paul goes on to say in verse 7, Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, here he's tying it all together, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep this festival, and that festival being Passover. Let us keep this festival, not with the old bread, leavened with malice and wickedness. A sinner's a sinner's a sinner is a sinner. Don't keep that fast with all of these sins attached to us. No. Not that way, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now, I mentioned in my comments to begin, I think a spring is a fresh start. And so it should be. This should be a fresh start for all of us. So some of you I know, uh, because of the COVID, uh, we haven't seen your faces in quite some time. We really miss you. We love you. And we would love to see you again. Perhaps it's time to, uh, to uh, spring clean our lives, declare a fresh start, and ask the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords to bless us as we uh, begin again to rebuild our lives at the end of this horrendous event, that uh, this pandemic of the COVID virus. I'm glad that I can see daylight at the end of the tunnel, and soon and very soon we'll be together again as children of like precious faith. So God bless you, and I, I, I want to end this with the, uh, with the blessing that God gave to Moses to give to the children of Israel through Aaron, and that it goes something like this. Now the Lord bless you, and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And we pray that in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you each and every one. We will see you soon.